So ancient Greek numerals are way better than Roman numerals, and it is time that you learn them. Here they are, 1 through 10. And guess what? If you already know the Greek alphabet, you already know how to use these Greek numerals. And these are equivalent to the Roman numerals. Now, we tend to use the Arabic numerals. The Romans use the Roman numerals. And the Greeks used and still use these numerals, which is just their alphabet. If you want to learn how to write the Greek alphabet, see this video. So we're going to learn these today. Why do you need to learn them? Well, if you're learning ancient Greek or even modern Greek, you need to know the Greek numerals eventually. And really, for ancient Greek, you need to know them sooner than later because these are the numerals they use in their texts. You can't just see a random assortment of letters and be like, well, I don't know what that is, when it's just a very easy number. So here's 1 to 10. 1 is the alpha. We usually put a little tick mark next to it. That little tick mark is called a geraya, which is the ancient Greek word for antennae. And in modern Greek, that's pronounced gerea. So you have the alpha plus a little kerea, Number two is beta, plus the chorea. Three is gamma, with the chorea. Four, delta, with the chorea. Five, epsilon, with the chorea. And then six is digamma, plus the chorea. And if you've learned these Greek numerals before, you may be slightly confused. Why is six digamma? And that's because it was always digamma. Digamma is a letter of the ancient Greek alphabet that went into disuse because most of the dialects just lost the sound. It made the sound of w. In fact, its old name was probably something like wow. wow. As it is in the Phoenician writing system, which is the origin of the Greek letters. But we'll keep calling it digamma. And it's called digamma because it looks like two capital gammas stacked on top of each other. All of the letters, though, written by hand, instead of being written in the way that they were often inscribed or chiseled into stone, came to be written in a more fluid way, a bit more cursive looking. And the way that the digamma ended up looking in later antiquity and by medieval times was more like this. In order to save space, medieval scribes started inventing really awesome ligatures, where they link letters together, like omicron and upsilon, or sigma and tau. Now, sigma and tau joined together make this letter, which is called stigma, stigma. And now you're probably realizing where the confusion comes from. The cursive digamma looks very much the same as the stigma ligature. And from that reason, from the Middle Ages up to the present day, Greeks have thought that the number six is stigma, when in reality it's always been digamma. And for that reason, instead of writing the ligature, which is not a part of the alphabet or the ancient numbering system, I'm using digamma, and I encourage you to do the same. So six is digamma plus the chorea, seven is zeta plus the chorea, eight is the eta plus the chorea, nine is theta chorea, and 10 is the iota plus the chorea. Now in this video, I'm not gonna teach you how to count with ancient Greek words, hendio, tria, tetra, pente, hex, hepta, and so forth. You're going to have to look at this video, Ancient Greek by the Ranieri Dowling Method, because in that audiobook, I actually give you all the numbers, all the cardinal, ordinal, and adverbial numbers. So go take a look at that if that's what you wanna learn. Today, we're just interested in the numerals, in the graphic symbols for these numbers. Because these numbers are universal and really they're best learned in our native language. That is, we can write numbers down using the Greek numerals instead of the Arabic numerals and learn and ingrain them that way. I'll show you how. And one of the best ways to do that is just to take any book, as I've done with my copy of Daphnis and Chloe, and you see the pages are numbered underneath the Arabic numeral in the Greek numeral. Here's my copy of Daphnis and Chloe. And as you can see, I've done the numbers here. There's 120 and 116, 104, 105, all right, 85, 84. So this is one way you can really rapidly learn or at least get a sense of the Greek numerals. I haven't done this though yet with my copy of the Apology, so let's do that now. All right, we got a one, one. Two, so, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth and so on. Well, what happens after 10? Well, then we do iota alpha, that's 11. Iota beta is 12, iota gamma is 13, and so forth, all the way through 19. And then kappa is 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, and so forth, all the way to lambda, which is 30. And the same thing for 31, 32, 33, all the way to 39. 40 is mu, 50 is nu, 60 is xi, 70 is omicron, and then 80 is pi, 
And what do we do for 90? This is another letter that's not in the usual ancient Greek alphabet. And that is a letter that is called Coppa in ancient Greek. This is the origin of the letter Q over in the Etruscan and Roman alphabet. So we have one through 99. What's 100? It's letter Rho. Ensign Rho, sir. So then if we want something like 172, that's what it looks like. Or 164 or 199. That's what it looks like. We just keep repeating the system. Then 200 is sigma. 300 is tau. 400 is upsilon. 500 is phi. 600 is chi. 700 is psi. 800 is omega. And 900 is sampi, which I suppose is the Italian plural of sampo. Sampo, we shall die of starvation. Sampo. So that gives us so many numbers from 842 to 365, 999. And for 1000, well, then we just use use the same letters again, but we put the carea right at and below the line and in front of the letter. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, carea plus the iota. Very simple, very clear, very easy to use. Now you have more than enough to be able to start writing numbers in books, but the other thing you can do is start to do really simple math problems like... This one plus one is two. Now, of course, we know what that is. Obviously, we know how to do simple math, but we're getting our eyes used to seeing these as numbers now. So maybe, I don't know, two minus one is, of course, one. And what about 20 plus two is 22. I've got a little kid here. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering, is there a zero? Yes, there is. And it looks like that. It basically looks like an Omicron with a line over it. How about 36 plus six is 42? That is the answer. What about 110 plus 20? Two. That is 132. Of course, this is public math, and I hope I didn't get everything wrong here. And it is harder for me, since I've been using Arabic numerals all my life, to use these as, uh, as numerals in this way, but I don't think I made any mistakes. Who knows? If I did, let me know in the comments. Uh, 10 divided by 2 equals 5. And what about 428? Minus 6 equals 422. Yes, that'll do. That's the ticket. Now, when you find these letters actually written in ancient Greek, sometimes they're just a letter with no markings next to them. Sometimes they have the Korea. Sometimes they have a bar over them. They can be either lowercase or capital. And they could represent potentially both the cardinal number, 1, 2, 3, 4, as well as the ordinal numbers, first, second, third, fourth, just like Roman numerals. So just finding any excuse whenever you're writing a number, instead of writing in the Arabic numerals, just using the Greek numerals, that is the way, that's the ticket. But some of them have really weird forms. So I have this little spreadsheet, it's public, it's mostly for just the measures of ancient Greek, like units of measure for length and for weight and volume and things like that. But on the end, I have this little part, which are mnemonics for how to remember some of these weird forms. And I'll take you through some of them right now. For the first four numbers, which are like these, and you can of course use the, uh, the Korea or the bar, whatever you wanna do. In any case, I have nothing for you. Just gotta learn the Greek alphabet, at least the first five letters there. But then when it comes to the number six, if you connect these together, well then it gets something that kind of looks like the number six. Right? That's what the digamma is. The digamma is number six. What about seven? Well, seven is letter zeta, and it looks a lot like how we often write seven, especially uh, in Anglophone countries. Naturally, you might write it like that, or that, or that, or something, but it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? So that is seven. That helps. Now, for eta, if you're an English speaker like me, eight and eta start with the exact same syllable. So that's a helpful way to remember that number eight is eta. Even of course the ancient name is heta. And in modern Greek it's pronounced eta. But if you can remember eta, the normal pronunciation of the ancient letter in English, it sounds like eight. That's an easy way to remember it. Then what happens? Well, then we have the nine and yeah, it looks kind of like, you know, if you squint, it looks like a nine, especially if you do something like that. Nah, it really looks like it. <laughs> so that is number nine. As for 10, well, you know, we write 10 like this, 
or maybe even like this, but perhaps. And you know, it looks like it looks like that. You know, it looks like that part of it. That's fine. It looks like the one in ten. I know I'm, I'm stretching here, but I'm trying to give you something. What about twenty? So twenty is the next letter. Well, here I take advantage of my knowledge of ancient Greek, and I know that ekoshi. Ekoshi is the word for 20, and it has a kappa in it. So if you haven't already know the numbers in Greek, then you can use that kappa as your way to remember the numeral for 20. What about 30? Well, 30, the lambda, if you make the capital version, for example, and if you were to connect them together, well, then you get this triangle thing. And well, you know, a triangle has one, two, three points, and 30 starts with a three, and that has a three in it. So that is my way of remembering that lambda is 30. Next is 40. And the mu, if we put into, let's make a nice box here, like a nice box. And if we try to put the mu inside it, we see the mu fits that box real nice, doesn't it? And a box has four sides and 40 starts with the number four, right? Does that help? I think it helps, helps me at least. All right, moving on. So then for 50, 50 is the mu. And the capital looks like this. Well, if you connect these together, look at that. How many lines are in this? Well, there's four sides, and then there's a line across. And that's five, and there is a five in 50. Is this working for you? Works for me. 60 is the letter xi, xi, if you're using the ancient pronunciation xi in modern Greek. And conveniently, the word for 60 in ancient Greek is hexakonta, and it has the letter xi in it, xi, so 60. Next is 70. 70 is omicron. I have absolutely nothing for you. I have nothing for you at all, except that the ancient Greek word for 70 is hebdomekonta. And it happens to have an omicron in it. Boy, that is that is not very helpful, though. So good luck with that one. 80 is next, and that is the letter pi. Well, pi, hmm, pi, pizza pie, you say. And how many slices do pizza pies normally get? They get eight. Because, of course, you divide, you know, you go through, you know, four times. Eight slices, 80. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is this helping everybody? Is this helping? It helps me. If that doesn't work, then think of the capital pi, which could also be a number, plus the lowercase one. That's pi pi. And if we connect these together, we get two boxes. And all together, that's eight sides, right? Yep, we are stretching more than they do at the yoga gym. Next is 90. 90 is this lovely letter, the Coppa letter, and it looks a lot like a 9. So, hey, uh, we'll, we'll take them. We'll take them where we get it. That's pretty easy. Got it. That's Coppa. That's 90. 100 is Rho. You know what else has a Rho in it? 100. 100. Uh-huh. Rho. 100. Is this working? 200 is the sigma. And sigma, well, again, I'm going to take advantage of knowing the Greek, the akosioi, the akosia, and so forth. It has a sigma in it. Aha, the akosioi. All right. Yeah, that's the best I can come up with that one. Um, conveniently, though, the akosioi, it starts with the tau, and tau is our numeral for 300. 400 is upsilon. I have nothing for you. I'm sorry. If you think of something, please leave it in the comments. Then we have 500. 500 is letter phi, P, and of course, the word for 500 is pentakosioi. And if we were to aspirate this incorrectly and say pentakosioi, well, pa is this letter. So yeah, does that help? Kind of. All right, then 600. 600 is the letter chi, the letter chi, you write it like this too. And this is visually similar to our letter X, isn't it? Such as in 600, right? Huh? Or even better, the X sound in the name for this number, which is hexakosioi. So, hey, that's, that's, that's good, right? Okay, 700. 700 is heptakosioi, and it has a, has a p sound in it, well, the letter psi, psi, in the ancient pronunciation, psi, in the modern pronunciation, it starts with a P sound, and that's a P sound. So, hey, there you go. That's something. 800. Well, that's omega, right? That's 800. Well, it reminds me of the omega in okto, which means eight, and that is how I make the association to get to 800. Good enough, right? Finally, we have 900. This is the letter sampi, 
plural of sample, of mystery science theater fame, of course. Sample! And I have absolutely nothing for you. This is just a weird enough letter that hopefully it sticks in your brain. Because after that, we go to alpha with the Korea before, or underlined, or something like that, and then that is a thousand, and we just have to reuse the system from there. Note that the capital of the sampi looks something like this. It's this, looks weirdly like a, like a T or something. It's a weird thing, and you know, like, it's probably three people on Earth are actually actively use that one. Uh, and I prefer the lowercase ones anyway for my numbers um, most of the time. So now you have absolutely no excuse not to know the Greek numerals. Go practice them, go number the pages of your books or anything or basic arithmetic until you feel comfortable with the system. But if you want to learn to count in ancient Greek, well, then I do recommend Ancient Greek by the Renieri Dowling Method. Thanks so much, Kadin Humid Oida, especially to each and every one of my Patreon supporters. Erroste. And 100 is Sampo. Sampo!